Okay, here we have a DXF or DWG from a company called Technics. And if we go to their website, uh, if you come here, this is their homepage. If you go to Tool Holding, and if you go to any of these, you know, we'll go to Collet, let's say, I'll just pick one of these here. When you select that, if you scroll down here, you can see that there's a link to get CAD drawings. So if I click on this, it will list the CAD links here for each of the products. Now, because this company does not yet have the uh, solid models done, this is what it looks like when you bring it into Esprit. So we're going to go ahead and create a tool holder using their print data. So the first thing that I want to do, so depending on which one you download it, I mean, it should look something like this. And you're going to have some geometry here in the uh, design portion. So what I'm going to do here is just, it's kind of hard to see. Uh, what we can do here is just control A or right click and say select all. And then here in the properties window, we're going to come to the color and I'm just going to make everything black. That makes it easier to see. If you have a black background, you might want to make it white, whatever. So now what I'm going to do is just uh, grab the portions of this drawing that I want to use. So I'm going to hold the shift key down on my keyboard and I'm going to digitize one of the pieces of geometry that uh, is included in the out, outline, the profile of the tool holder itself. And I see here, because this is a collet holder, I'm going to go ahead and hold Control and Shift on my keyboard. So both Control and Shift keys, I'm holding them down. And when I pick that, that's going to add all connected geometry to the existing group. So this looks like about everything that I need to create the solid model for the tool holder. So what I'm going to do here is come to the Layers menu uh, the layers menu and go ahead and hit the uh, add a layer and I'm gonna call this I guess we'll just call it profile hit enter and then down in the properties for the layer I'm just gonna go ahead and assign those grouped items to the profile layer so now when I just to verify I can turn that on or off and see that yeah I pretty much grabbed everything that I need and then I'll, I'll leave that off for a second and then I'm going to right click and say select all again and then right click again and we can just say select uh, delete here. And that should clear our screen of all of this other stuff. We could turn the profile layer back on. So uh, you have this segment here, um, you know, this, this is at the end of the taper and that's usually where the zero point would be for, you know, when you load this into the spindle, this would be kind of at the face of the spindle there. So what I'm going to do now is go to manipulation and say move origin, and I'm going to pick that end point there. So we snap the tool holder, the center of that tool holder at X, Y, zero at the center of where the taper would terminate. So now what I want to do is just kind of clean up the drawing and get only the areas that I want. So if I hit uh, the escape key and just clear out and I see this stuff down here, let's see here, all this, I don't need any of this stuff. So I'm just going to go ahead and let's see over here, if I window in on that, I can see that anything below the center line I don't need. So I could just window in on that whole thing and hit the delete key on my keyboard or right click and hit delete, whatever you prefer to do. Um, now here I've got a couple of extra pieces of geometry. I'm just going to go ahead and window on the, those and hit delete. And then over here I can see that this is one continuous piece of geometry. So here what I'm going to do is go to geometry and hit keep and I'm gonna pick the portion that I want to keep and then I'm gonna hit escape on my keyboard so nothing is selected nothing is active and then window in on those pieces of geometry that I no longer need 
And now I have a cleaned up profile of the of basically half of the tool holder. Now, when we use the modeler, this has to be a closed profile. So I'm just going to come to segment here and pick this endpoint to this endpoint and hit escape so nothing is active and then hold the shift key and pick a piece of geometry and it will grab all of the connected geometry for me. So now I have a completed geometry profile for that particular tool holder from Technics. So under modeling we can come to the revolve function this is the second icon under modeling when I activate that uh, you'll notice that uh, the group kind of disappears there but that's okay it's just waiting for me to select a rotational axis about the center so when we pick this this uh, x-axis here you'll see the preview of the solid model is on the screen and just make sure that your angle your total angle there is set to 360 degrees and once we say OK we basically have the model that we need for collision checking at this point uh, we can follow some of the other um, you know, any, if you've done any of the other tutorials for milling holders, uh, you basically know what to do at this point, but I'm going to go ahead and complete this for somebody who is viewing this tutorial for as their first tutorial. So basically, when we have a holder, uh, the z-axis is going to point up into the spindle, and this is oriented incorrectly. So what we need to do is rotate this model about the y-axis a positive 90 degrees. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit control A on my keyboard or again right click and say select all. And then we're going to right click again and say copy. We're going to pick rotate. We're going to say move. We're going to do positive 90. And I'm going to uncheck so this is not checked the use origin for rotation. I'm going to say OK and I'm going to pick my y-axis. So now we see the holder as though it was sitting in like a vertical mill inside of the spindle. It's pointed up and down with the positive z-axis going up into the machine spindle. And the zero point is at the center of the widest taper. And uh, what we can do now is create our reference point for the tool axis. So basically, uh, under manipulation, we're going to use what's called the modify work plane. And if this is not selected for you, just click down here at the lower right on this little arrow, and you have all of your modification uh, commands. And the top one is the modify work plane. I'm going to go ahead and just, you can see that as I as I move my mouse around on this UVW, it highlights different components. We're going to go ahead and pick on the Z axis. And when I do that, no matter where my mouse is, you'll see that the UVW stays on the, um, the, uh, the Z axis. And as I move my mouse around, uh, I can pick like any of these endpoints here on this segment that's still there or at the center of this. Uh, you know circular face. I'm just gonna go ahead and pick that and it snaps that to the center there and then here under the work planes I'm gonna add a work plane and I'm gonna call this TA underscore one. Now I'm gonna click away and basically we can save this but I like my models looking like they normally do and when I go to the Technics website uh, Let's go back to collet chucks here and pick one of these. And you can see that the collet nut is a darker color. So when I go back here, what I'm going to do is uh, the view that I'm in is in F4. So if you pick or uh, press on the F4 key on your keyboard, it will snap the holder to this view. And then what I'm going to do is just uh, kind of, let's go down here. This is something that um, might be... Uh, something that you're familiar with at this point. The first icon here after your your uh, grid values 
is going to allow you to select or deselect items. So under bodies here, what I'm going to do is just click on this solid body, this first icon, and it will unhighlight that and leave these highlighted. And now when I window in on stuff, it will allow me to pick solid faces. Now if I window this way, you'll see that anything that is in, is touching the box will be included. So you see this face right here, this is included. But if I go the other way, that face is not included. And you can see the box has dashed lines. So what we could do here is we can just kind of go wherever the, a little bit beyond that collet nut and use the right to left. And it doesn't matter if you go from the top or the bottom or the bottom to the top, it does the same thing. And when I do this, I'm going to right click and go to copy. And we're going to say attribute. And I'm going to come here and pick black, but use custom color and kind of pick something like around 80, these values around 80, and just say OK. And when I do that, I have a darker collet nut. So now I can save this out. So I can come to File, Save As. And down here on the uh, Save As Type, I'm going to come to Holder File. And then for me, this was in my Technics folder under Holders. And then you can give it the name of the holder that you downloaded. Uh, Technics has some uh, you know, nomenclature that they're using. So I just grabbed the file name from the DAWG. And when you have Holder File set, it's going to save it as a GDML file for use in a spree. And that's about it. So hopefully this helps you make some more accurate collision checking simulations inside of a spree. If you have any questions or have any requests, uh, simply let us know at support at dptechnology.com.